Part one, power supply and the audio power output section of the eBay VHF airband receiver. So as you can see, I've installed the components for the 386 headphone driver, it drives headphones through this jack, and all the power supply components. So some of the notable things here are that for the reverse polarity diode, the cathode band points up when you install it. If you have the cathode band pointing down, it will short 12 volts to ground, and you do not want that. So all of these other components, um, they have a hook on one side of their lead, as you can see, and they're installed so you can grab a clip or a test lead on the top of the lead. For example, this ferrite bead um, conducts the 8 volts regulated source and it's an excellent test point to measure 8 volts. So here, you don't have any inputs to the LM386 yet, but if you have a speaker or headphones plugged into the speaker jack, you can see noise when you touch something metal to pin 3 of the IC, which I'll show you in a minute. The power supply is attached to the ground rail, which is on the underside of the board, and the top of the reverse polarity diode, D3. As you can see, I've got 12.7 volts. I've got it automatically limited to 150 milliamps, so even if I short the leads together, uh, that's not excessive current to damage anything. So I've got the headphone jack connected via a cord to a small Bluetooth speaker. So when I tap the metal object on pin 3 of the LM3, LM386, there we go. Then you can hear you can hear noise. That's um, the LM386 picking up atmospheric noise, amplifying it, and driving the speaker with it. The speaker is a powered speaker; it has its own amplifier inside of it. I wouldn't recommend driving most speakers with LM386 because it doesn't have the power. Um, I know some people build guitar amps with them; they're not great but better off driving headphones. Anyway, I'll post another video when I have more circuits built.